Hello and welcome. Today I'm doing something very different from usual. I'm reading one of my works. A work I made as a joke, uh, a fanfic of two of my favourite streamers. One being Nex and the other being Chibi Doki. Now, as for the reason for me reading this horrible, horrible, horrible thing, essentially it's because one of said streamers, Nex, unfortunately, doesn't seem to be able to read. And so, in light of this uh, tragic piece of information, I had taken it on myself to read it for him. And of course, for anyone else who wishes to find out what, for some strange reason, what's written on this page, but just doesn't have the time. So, Without any further ado, here is my fanfic. Curses, fans, and scaly feet. The snake of light jumped at Chibi, poised to strike a massive empty head. Just before it struck, Nags tripped forward. His huge nose connected with the snake, and at a terrifying speed, it was sucked up into the chasm of his left nostril. Nags picked himself off the floor, rubbing his red nose with his characteristically orange hand. Just when I thought I'd got worked out my balance. People don't realise how difficult it can be living with a massive nose. <laughs> Nags complained, brushing dust from his trousers. Hmm, I'm starting to feel a bit weird. Tibby watched on in horror as Nags slowly morphed into a toilet. He had been cursed. Yo, Nags, thanks for taking that for me. Kind of sucks for you, though. How? What do you mean? Nags asked, as the hive mind spanned Naglaf, he doesn't know, in his chat. Chat is constantly in Nags' mind. This is canon. I just feel like my head is full of water. Dude, you turned into a spirit devil. Tibby burst out, laughing hard. What? Nags shouted, his small mind not a a unable to... Imagine what could have happened. Tibby pulled out a convenient mirror from... somewhere. Probably somewhere inside that balloon that she calls her head, and showed Nags his reflection. I'm not a jaguar! I'm a toilet! What the beep? He roared, the tank lid flapping wildly with every word. Yes, this is the censored Nags. You've got to help me fix this! I can't be a toilet forever! How will I pee behind the couch or shit myself at the local Six Flags? Like this? My weekends are ruined! Oi, right, listen, bro. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'll try to help. JB offered, turning away and looking into the distance. Don't blame me if I can't fix it, though, she added, just to cover herself. She headed off in a random direction. The spinner wheel doesn't really matter, and I'm lazy skipping along until she tripped over a square block. Of course, you can do anything in Minecraft, even make balls. <laughs> Bald lays, Chibi thought. With her genius idea, she immediately opened up a portal. Using her cringe cyber dragon, or is it pink balloon dragon? I don't know. Powers and dived headfirst into her Minecraft world. Greeting her was the Giga Chat ca cat named Chat, who stared at her in fear, terrified of what chaos the cringe dragon's next adventure had wrought on this world. Oh, hey, Chad, I missed you, she squeaked delightedly. How are you? She placed one of her bizarrely small hands upon the cat's square head, making, making it tense up in fear. After waiting for a response from the cat, despite the large head, it's mostly filled with air, she left the tiny hut and headed towards the, a castle she had found the last time she jumped into the world. As soon as she arrived, she noticed something very strange about the castle. Instead of it being perfectly square as expected, this castle had curves. Noticing this, Chibi felt a little jealous. She rushed over the lowered George Bridge. After all, if something could give Minecraft curves, then perhaps there was a cope for Chibi too. 
As she passed through the gate, she noticed a drastic change in scenery. This was no longer the Minecraft universe. Walking further into the courtyard, she noticed numerous statues scattered around it. No way! She exclaimed, getting incredibly excited. To be charged for transforming into Chibuffy as she shoulder barged through the closest door. She darted down the halls using her sense of smell to sniff out her target's feet. Her greatest love was finally within reach. <laughs> He's here! She squealed with excitement. Squealed, drooling with excitement. She took a deep breath in, puffed out her chest, so it made it look like there was something there. There isn't. And with a trembling hand, opened the door. Who disturbs me as I laze? The rough, gruff voice of Browser, Bowser growled. In front of him was a plate of partially glazed, moist meatballs. As soon as he looked upon Chibi, his expression softened and quickly turned into what, according to Chibi, was a very alluring and sexy smile. Oh, oh, I'm sorry I raised my voice like that. Please forgive me, princess. Bowser purred as he tipped his fedora. Chibi blushed hard as she scream, scream, squirmed inside, as she squirmed inside with joy. Oh no, please, Bowser Summer. Yes, I'm doing that. I, I like it when you, uh, you have a shell and your, uh, your spikes are cool. Chibi mumbled, attempting to flirt. Why? Why, thank you. Bowser answered, blushing as hard as Chibi. Yes, somehow that worked. Author's note. So, at this point, literally anything could happen. But knowing how Chibi acts at stream, what some of you are thinking, definitely wouldn't happy. Go to join Hornydale. Anyway, back to the cringe fest. After a bit of feet licking, they sat down to eat the glazed meatballs Bowser made earlier. You know, I've always wondered, darling, Chibi started, having gained a lot of confidence in the past minute. Why are you always kidnapping Peach and locking her in her in a castle, only to have that small, fat Italian plumber beat the shit out of you every time. I have thought about this long and hard, and well, Bowser shifted in his seat and looked off into the distance. All we can do in life is endure and carry on. Life isn't kind nice enough to let anyone give up, no matter how hard it hits them. You just gotta roll with the punches. That's why I will never stop no matter how many times my plans are foiled. Wow. Wow, that was very... I'm 14 and this is deep of you, Tibby noted. Out of nowhere, Tibby's expression dropped. It may have been the moist, glazed meatballs on her plate that shined in the candlelight, reminding her of Nags's growing forehead, or that the remaining three brain cells floating in that universe-sized head of hers beat the infinitesimally small odds and met each other for once. But she actually managed to remember about Nags. Oh shit, Nags! She panicked, jumping from her seat. Who, who, mega lol is Nags? <clears throat> Fuck. Oh shit, Nags! She panicked, jumping up from her seat. Who, mega lol? Bowser asked, with clear concern in his voice. Nex is a great friend of mine. He's he's always super kind. <laughs> Nex is a great friend of mine. He's super kind and wise. He always helps me out when I need it. Oh, but don't tell him that. It'll go straight to his head, and his neck isn't that strong. Isn't strong enough for a. Ne It'll go straight to his head, and. It'll go straight to his head, and his neck isn't strong enough for a head like mine. Tibby explained. He was turned into a toilet somehow. I came out here to try and find a cure. Oh, that sounds awful, Bowser sympathized. I have room in the dungeon. We can put him up there until we find a way to turn him back to normal. Oh, that sounds perfect. 
Oh, that sounds perfect. Oh, that sounds perfect. Nax is a huge bottom, so he'd love to be put in a dungeon. That's decided then. The pair of them headed down to into the dungeon. Once there, Chibi opened a portal and jumped through. Waiting on the other side was a molding Nags. Nags had been grumpily complaining how long Chibi was taking, despite all the hard work she had been doing. Where have you been? He shouted, still molding so hard that you could physically see the hair, his hair coming out. Where have you been? He shouted, still molding so hard that you could physically see... Where have you been? He shouted, still molding so hard that you could physically see all his hair coming out. Well, listen, I've been searching the world for a fix to this problem. You have. I could be improving my Minecraft world or working on my plan to make my whole chat love feet just like me. Chibi bluntly pointed out. Uh, you're, you're right. I'm, I'm sorry. Nags looked down in the, at the floor in shame. It's just, I don't know how I can live like this. I had to scare off 12 people trying to use me. Sorry, bro. I can't relate, but it sounds tough. Tibby dismissed. Anyway, me and Bowser are going to put you in this d basement, so you'll be safe there. What were you going to say? Nags asked. Before he could get an answer, Bowser's huge scaly hand reached through Tibby's portal and dragged Nags into the dungeon. Right, house rules. Bowser started. House rules? Really? Don't interrupt my darling. Chibi scolded. Sorry. Nags replied. His chat now streaming at now spam. His chat now spamming our streamer, Sag. You know, I'm starting to think have second thoughts and letting this guy stay here. Bowser complained. He'll be okay, darling. He's only here until he returns to normal. And he'll be out of the way here. After all, it's very well sound insulated. To be reasoned with a slightly hushed voice. Well, I guess. Bowser replied, still unsure about the situation. Right, as I was saying, house rules. Number one, no going to the toilet anywhere other than the toilet. Your chat has told me what you like. Number two, let us know before you have any guests around. And finally... Please be quiet when people are sleeping. All but one. Rule one is sensible, but I can live with that. After all, I'm a toilet. I haven't had the urge to get, empty my bladder since it became like this, which is a miracle, as normally it's every 30 seconds. Right, well, me and Bay are going to go off and get married. Right, well, me and Bay are off to get married and go on our honeymoon. So after that, we'll fix you up. To be declared, kissing Bowser on the cheek. Oh, congratulations, Chibi! Nags exclaimed, genuinely excited and happy for them. I thought you'd never get out of that of your cave and meet someone. I'm really happy for you. Oh, thanks, Nags. You're such a sweetie. Chibi smiled back. Well, we've got to head off now, so make yourself at home. Chibi and Bowser left, giggling and flirting, flirting as they went. Five long years later. Nags was woken by a very unusual sound. Looking around the once silent dungeon, Nags grew excited. Chibi has finally returned at once! Chibi has finally returned at last! I'll be free of this curse! Nags thought, with tears in his porcelain eyes, until he heard a clearer sound. Oh no! I got to go! The high-pitched squeak of a very famous Italian plumber filled him with dread. The door was kicked open as the character rushed in, desperately fiddling with his belt. The curse was undone. Sorry, Nags. <laughs>